Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Ron Podcast. I'm your host, Juan, and as always, my co-host is here with me. Hey, Trip. Hey, how Trip. You do, how you doing, man? I'm good. Yeah? I'm doing good. It's good. I had Taco Bell earlier. I thought you were going, going to ask about it, but you didn't. About the Taco Bell? Yeah, you didn't open up with, hey, did you eat Taco Bell earlier? I can I try did. that again if you want. Yeah, okay, let's go. Reroll it. Okay. Um, hey, welcome back to this Ron Podcast. I'm your host, Juan. As always, my co-host. We're with, I see I reflected up. Anyways, how was Taco Bell? I ate it. It was pretty good. What'd you get? Can hey, I guess what you uh, got? Yeah, you can. Uh, quesadilla. Wrong. That was actually right. All right. But I up? ordered it last. What's up, man? Uh, so this week, we are going to be talking about a super special thing mm-hmm. that was suggested to us about 100 years ago from somebody super special. Who is it? Uh, Sierra. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about One Week Friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We sure are. And that's our intro. How have you been? I've been good, man. I'm, uh, I'm just like a little, I'm a little out of it because, uh, I played basketball on Saturday and then today's Monday and we're at spring break and the guys want to play again. So, <sighs> so I did. Twice in a week? Nah. I mean, it's, it was like twice in this, like in three days, you know, and I'm like really tired. <laughs> like my arms hurt and my legs hurt. And, uh, yeah, but, but you look good. Yeah. Thanks, man. So it's cause you got those like new kinds of, minerals and uh oils coming around you from all the boys slamming up from all the the baskets and the balls Mm -hmm. and your hormones are Mm -hmm. just juicing well i mean the the thing i like the least about basketball besides the getting tired part is um whenever i'm done with it i always like obviously take a shower because i smell or whatever sure whatever but then my my face and like my arms kind of feel like hot so i feel uh-huh. feverish for like yeah. at least the next day like the rest of this day i'll feel like i'm like i'm running a fever because I'm i would s- like to tell you a trick yeah. called cold showers oh no no fuck with those yeah no see the, the trick is you get in when it's warm and you're like i could deal with this you slowly start turning down the temperature and you're like oh this actually feels good it's a weird fucked up thing i don't you like gotta do it cold showers. Yeah, but but yeah speaking of smashing up on boys with you know fucking yeah him, i did i did smash up on a boy dude this new guy um he's damien his name's ryan oh i was gonna guess bradley he's a really little guy and like he uh, he asked if he could play with us we said sure because we're a shorter guy uh-huh um so we could play three on three and he's he is, he's really good. He's really fast. He can do really good layups. He's really good at passing. He understands how to play basketball as opposed to all of us. Uh-huh. Um, but for some reason, I think it's like a sense of pride. He likes to guard me, and I'm the mm. tallest guy out there. And I think he likes to uh, feel good about like scoring on me mm-hmm. because I'm so much taller than him. And you're just kind of like, huh. I'm I'm just as good as the rest of them, my I mean, dude. Yeah, I, I mean. There, there were a few times where I was able to stop him and block him because I'm taller than him, right? Mm-hmm. But whenever he would like uh, score on me, he was I could just see like like gleam in his eye, being like, "Yeah, that made that tall guy look like a fucking idiot." <laughs> um, and I was like, and it felt kind of bad because like then I kind of whatever now then had to block him, and he's a lot faster than I am. So like, yeah. fuck, all I can do is like just try to get in front of him and try my best. Um, anyways, one play, someone inbounded the ball, and I jumped really high, and I jumped. I swear, I jumped like. At least to like his shoulders. And I got the ball and I just, I didn't even like hit the ground. I got it and shot it in the air. But then I just like l- kind of landed on him with my front parts <laughs> and I just rubbed my balls <laughs> off his back. And I felt really weird about it because in my head I was like, Oh man, I felt every bit of me touching his back. There's no way he didn't feel me just totally do that to him. And it was really weird. You just met the guy. He played again with us on Monday. He's a nice guy. Anyways, Ryan, sorry for me pressing my balls all up on you. <laughs> this is a great way to start the episode. How you been, man? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted you to like marinate in what you just said <laughs> and oh, got man. out there. Man, I've been good. I wish that I could be competitive in any facet like that, but I just go- don't give a fuck. Yeah. I've tried to be competitive about things. It's more so like... I want to win because winning's fun, mm-hmm. but honestly, I don't feel better for beating somebody else yeah. when a lot of people are just like, yeah, fucking kick their ass. I agree. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Winning does feel good. Um, it does. But it losing, just does. losing is like, well, I lost. And yeah, it's just like, some... they were better than me. What could I say? And especially when we lose, I kind of feel like, oh, man, I lost. And I remember, oh, oh right, this this game has no implications for anything. Yeah, that's what it's it all always bullshit, comes you know? down to. Yeah. A couple of my buddies, two of them in particular, get really down on themselves whenever they lose. And they get really like frustrated. <laughs> I'm just like, yo, like, you, oh, do, you do understand we're like, we're level designers and animators here playing a, a sport, like, or like poorly. the most amateur that there can be. <laughs> yeah, like, and so. we're doing, we you know, we're doing our best. We're running around 
for 20, 30 minutes to score 15 points. Like, That's you understand, really funny. You understand we're trash. Yeah. So why are you beating yourself up on this? You know? Um, uh, yeah. Uh, dude, fun shit. Uh, yeah. I've been good. I haven't done anything. Wow, nothing? No. Do you wanna, night? I did have... Okay, so my work does things every once in a while. And this latest thing was chili night where mm-hmm. we fed all the residents chili. Turns out we couldn't feed all the residents because we anticipated much less people would come mm-hmm. because of in the past they've made i think that they made six crock maybe pots. not even that maybe it was four crock pots of chili and they had to take some home people just don't give a fuck about chili but then it turns out this year everyone in their fucking mom wants chili and when i say that literally like this mom came there and was like hey what's all this and i'm like have some chili and she's like no, I really want to, but like, I don't even live here. I'm just like, you know, my kid's mom or whatever. And then she got chili and she took some home for him. It was really fucking good. I had a good time. I ate it and I served it to you. Yeah, you did. Yeah. No, I, I had a bowl. It was good. Um, I've made chili, I guess, from scratch once before and it was fun. It was good. Yeah. Your, your t- tasted different. So I don't know what you put in it, but it tasted good. Well, pretty much it's, uh, it comes down to people that like chili. And people that think they like chili. Mm-hmm. And we made the kind of chili that people think that they like. Not like the really meaty stuff. Like you made like the more soupy stuff. Yeah. It's like, it's like a little bit soupier and it's also it wasn't more that, white people. It wasn't spicy at all, you know? Yeah. It, it didn't have good, anything still. to kick it up, but it was, yeah, it was still so a you good did time. Have, you did have sides to kick it up. Yeah. Hell a ton of sides. Bro. Speaking of sides. Okay. Yo. Um, so I was there for chili, right? Uh-huh. And I was there kind of late. So you guys had to stop it early because you guys ran out of chili. Yeah, essentially. So I got one of the last bowls of chili. I mean, uh-huh. never see it. And then some guy who is a resident shows up to get chili. <laughs> are dude. you talking about Andrew? Oh my fucking like, God. This are. blew my fucking mind, dude. There's chili, so chili's out. There's no more chili. It's fine. This guy's no problem. This guy just. <laughs> He was so okay, this so he's vegetarian, this. first off, I would like to say. So he couldn't have had the chili anyways. Okay, that's cool. But what he does do is still disgusting. He just gets. Oh my God. He gets a plate of. It's just a plate and he piles on sour cream and cheese and just a bunch of toppings and starts eating that. Like a lot of it. And then he just goes for seconds and thirds of that. It was, oh my God. Why? Why would he uh, do that? He said it's like a taco salad without the, the taco, tortilla. Yeah. No. Because <laughs> no? the taco salad okay. also has beans in it or like meat in it or rice in it, you know, <laughs> something. Up. He had avocados. <laughs> That's that's kind of meaty, you know. It's got no. Don't fucking defend him. It was gross. I'm not. I was just like, how the fuck is this guy doing that? And then he kept talking to me. Too, oh, I saw it. Yeah. And uh, I was washing dishes, and I couldn't hear him half the time. Mm-hmm. And he just wanted to talk about shit that I didn't know anything about, which feels like such a like. I'm gonna probably offend some people. Well, then again, the people that would be offended probably don't realize it. But anyways. A lot of like nerdier, geekier people, a lot of our people mm-hmm. don't understand when a conversation isn't going anywhere. Oh, yeah. They just want to talk about shit that they like. And when they get in, they're like, this person's not saying like, hey, man, don't talk to me about this. Like, they, they must love it. You must enjoy the fact that I'm just telling them about stuff I don't care about. Yeah. He talked to you about like turntables, like mm-hmm. old school turntables. Yeah. And he talked to you about like speakers. Yeah. He talked to you about cars. Okay. Yeah. Like he's like, I love rebuilding old cars. I was like, uh, it's like the <laughs> like, last okay, guy that man. gives a fuck about cars. Uh, this was my favorite thing. He's like, yeah, I've been trying to find like a good VHS player. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> and <laughs> he talked about going to like thrift stores and stuff, trying to find a good one. He's like, you know, none of them work. Or if they do work, then they only work for like a couple of plays and that's it. And I'm sitting there blown away. Like, excuse me you want to watch like fine vhs and then the one thing that i do know about vhs players is that you're supposed to like clean the uh the i don't even know what it is you're supposed to clean the tapes or whatever not tapes but the (laughs) some part of the vcr Mm -hmm. you're supposed to clean it every like eight or ten plays or some shit like that but nobody knew that growing up i don't think my family ever cleaned the vcr player yeah no nobody fucking did that so He's talking about all this, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, no, I heard that you're supposed to, like, clean them, but almost nobody knew how to clean them or what to do, so that's why you can't find a good VHS player. Those are broken, yeah. Yeah. 
And then he like kind of just went like, oh yeah. Well, anyways, <laughs> and he just he started going. talking about more. And I'm like, man, the one thing that I could have been like, yeah, people are dumb. You know, they don't read instructions all the time. That happens. Also, VHS players, like they probably didn't say shit about how to clean how them. How to maintain or, them. Yeah. yeah. Well, man. That was, so VCRs, man. I don't know. That guy just wanted to talk about weird shit. He also just kept talking about like his fiance. I was just like, I get it, man. You convinced someone to marry you. It's all that hard. <laughs> It's hell of Gossip funny. one of those two, no big deal. Um, yeah, that was that was an interesting. I thought that was just funny. I remember sitting there. I wanted to talk to you about that earlier. I was like, dude, can you fucking believe this? I also I had to connect with him on a certain level though mm-hmm. because he works at the movie theater, and when we went to the movies last week. Was that the guy that we ran into? Yeah. He's like, he goes, I trust you. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, good, man. Well, see you later. So what happened was uh, we went to go see Captain Marvel. It was good. Uh, yeah. And when I say it was good, I mean, it was fun. I yeah. had a really fun time watching it. Uh, but I bought my ticket at the little, or from my phone through the Cinemark app, printed it out at the kiosk, and it just printed me my receipt. And I was just like... I guess they changed how they do it. Yeah, yeah. That's whatever. Who I think cares? It got stuck in there. Must it must happened. have gotten stuck. Yeah. But honestly, I don't think that it prints out receipts. It always does. It prints out. It always prints out the like a receipt. The first parts of receipt. Even with mm-hmm. huh? Yeah. I I thought that it only did that when you pay using a card or something. No, it only does that when yeah. you pay. It only happens when you actually do it through the app. Actually, huh. when you pay using a card, it just gives you the thing. Okay. But the other way around, like here's the receipt because whatever. Yeah, it fucked with me though. I had no fucking yeah, you clue. Were, like, I was ready for two. It printed out one, and then I was like, guess this is the only mm-hmm. one. And I didn't double check it because I'm like already running late to the movie or mm-hmm. whatever. Long story short. I owed him one, yeah, so I like, talked to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, okay, see, there's a few things that happened to you this week, because last week I feel like nothing happened. Mm-hmm. But this week, man, what a trip. Dude, tell me all about okay, it. Okay, so um, I'm going to do the least important to the most important. Okay. So one of the, here's the least important one. Um, I was working at the talk truck on Sunday. Don't care. Keep going. And a lady said the wildest thing, Trip. I, I care more now. I've been in the I've been in the taco truck business for 16 years, right? Mm-hmm. I've heard a lot of crazy orders or a lot of weird suggestions. Yeah. This one I'd never heard before and it kind of blew my mind. Um, <laughs> is she, it like revolutionary? Like, should I start asking? I don't things? know. No, I don't know. I don't know if I would want to try the thing she ordered or whatever. It just doesn't sound that appealing, but I was just super confused and if, and really frustrated. She comes up and says, I want two, uh, beef quesadillas. And I go, sure. So I write two beef quesadillas. And she goes, the first one I want with just cheese. And I'm like, yeah, that's not a weird thing. You know, cheese, beef. You're boom, good. Whatever. Solved. She goes, second quesadilla, I would like it with no cheese. And I fucking lost my mind. I was like, what? And I kind of just stopped. I was like, because she was still continuing the order. But I was like, I just kind of like took a full stop. And I was like, did I mishear something? Did I did I misunderstand what she said? And so then she's done talking. I go, did you say no cheese? And she goes, yes. And then I go, and you and you said quesadilla, right? And she goes, yeah. I'm like, I'm like you, and I said, you do know a quesadilla. Because sometimes people don't know what they're ordering, you know? Sometimes they want tacos and they get a burrito because they're so dumb or whatever. But I go, you do know a quesadilla is essentially tortilla and melted cheese. Like, that's what a quesadilla is. She goes, I know. And I want it with no cheese. And I was like, okay. And I was like, kind of, she saw that I was like shooketh or whatever. So she goes, fine, just make it a burrito. And I go, no, no, no. I, I'll make what you want. I just need to understand it. Because, like, I've never heard this before. And so she goes, well, yeah, well, it's not even for me. It's for somebody else. And she orders, orders it like this all the time. And I've ordered it like a burrito before. And she won't eat it because she likes the shape of the quesadilla. Because our quesadillas are shaped like boxes. And uh-huh. I was like, so she'll only eat it if it's shaped like a box. And I was like, oh, I guess this is a can of worms I don't want to open or whatever. I don't know who she's giving this food to, but she sounds insane. And I was like, okay, cool. So the end of the way she retold me the order, and it's it was a beef quesadilla with no cheese and only avocado and sour cream. And I was like, okay, cool. And I was really upset because she looked at me like I was fucking stupid. Like I was dumb for asking and trying to clarify what she had said because she asked for something that sounds really dumb, in my opinion. I I haven't had any input in this Mm -hmm. at all because I'm still just shocked. Trip, right? It's like going to order pizza and being like, hey, I want no bread, no sauce, no cheese. I just don't want a box full of toppings. And then being being... Is that like you don't you want a salad? You, he's like, no, 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 no. I just want all the toppings in the box, though. Can you cook it too? I'm, I would be like, what? Hey, you understand yeah. what makes a pizza, right? So like, you understand. And it's case is even simpler. It's cheese and tor- and tortilla, you know. So I go home yeah. and tell my parents, and my mom kind of looks at me like I'm crazy, and my dad goes, that bitch is nuts. Like honestly, <laughs> like, 
<laughs> he was like, I have six, I, 16 uh, years. I'd never had anybody order a quesadilla with no cheese. It makes me feel better that it's for somebody else. Yeah, it wasn't for her. Yeah. But I feel like she must hate ordering for that person because they, it's probably the same thing every time she goes like, yeah, I want a quesadilla with no cheese. It's just like, hey, well, she should be like, I know this sounds insane. But she didn't preface it like that. Yeah, exactly. She should uh, just be like, hey, this next one's kind of weird. And, he, and I've had people say that in the, in the past. And I go, yeah, sure. And it's usually not that weird. They're like, could I get the sour cream on the side? And I go, you're right. That is insane or whatever. But <laughs> she should be like, hey, this one's a little weird. I want a quesadilla. But she doesn't like cheese. She just wants the, the meat in the tortilla. And I was like. <laughs> but yeah, that's the mac and cheese. But leave out the cheese. Just, Still want that milk. Yeah, yeah. Want the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throw in a little bit of butter. I'm cool. Okay. So that one really threw me for a loop. And um, I feel bad now. Right? Don't you just feel weird about it? Yeah. Yeah. I was. I was I was just not happy about that situation. Okay, tell me more things that are gonna make me feel shitty. The next what ones aren't that fuck? bad. Um, Friday I went out with my boy Jero. Yeah, we were having a good time. Oh, I, I already kind of told you about I this. I did hear about this. But we, he was having a good time. He had he had gone a month without drinking, and he decided that um, you know just to better himself, which is good. But now he's drinking again. So uh-huh. he asked me to come out, and I'm still not drinking. Um, for personal reasons, I don't want to talk about it on the podcast. It's my own business. Impotence. Impotence. Yeah, continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he said, hey, come out for a bit. And I was like, sure, I'll only be out some midnight because I have things to do in the morning. And he goes, okay, cool, that sounds fine. Yeah. So we're hanging out. He's having a couple beers. We go to a couple places. We end up going to Parkside. And then he has a couple shots. And then he's just drunk. He's and done. I, and I was like, fuck. And so it's like 1120. He's just like, you know what? I think it's time to go. I was like, yeah, it's a great idea. It is time to go. We should totally go. So we go to the bar that he works at because that's where his stuff is. Mm -hmm. And we're walking in and then he sees one of his coworkers and she's like, obviously you're not working. Yeah. And he's like, and then she sees her coworker has a friend with her and her friend is like this short little chick with like really curly hair and Jero has curly hair. Mm -hmm. And Jero like instantly in his mind is like, oh shit, I'm all about this chick. Yeah. And so then we, it was the whole thing. We spent the whole night out him just flirting with this girl. It was really weird. I'd never seen him flirt before. Pretty weird. It was. It's pretty weird. Especially when you're super sober, you're like, I'm like, is this what, is this what girls like to hear? Is this, is this what gets them going? Anyways. A big, who knows? I don't really want to talk about all of that. What I do want yeah. to talk about is that, um, at the bar, there's uh-huh. like, there's like a guy who's sitting at the corner yeah. of the bar and, uh, he kind of looked over and he said, Hey, you here alone? And I go, uh, no, I'm here with my friend. I'm just, I'm keeping an eye on him. And he goes, I'm okay. like here alone. But I'm, I'm here. Like here. Yeah. I have, alone. I have, you know, people. And he goes, okay. And he kind of quieted down for a bit and then, uh, I think he's kind of sauntered over next to me. He goes, Hey man, I'm Andrew. It's like, nice to meet you. I'm Juan or whatever. Yeah. And we just kind of started talking. He was saying that like he, he doesn't go out much or whatever. And he wanted to like break, you know, break out of his comfort zone and start meeting people. So we talked about just kind of normal stuff. Like what he likes to drink and stuff. And, mm-hmm. and then we do all the thing like, Hey, what are you studying? You know, what's your major? Yeah. Cause he goes to Chico State and all that stuff. What are you all about, babe? And he was saying he's going to be a dentist. Like, Oh, that's cool. And I told him I was going to be an animator. And he's like, oh, that's awesome, man. He's like, good for you, throwing your life away. <laughs> exactly. And he goes, like, he said something like, um, I think it's cool for someone to like to, uh, to go to school for something they're passionate about, like yeah. something like something that you know isn't guaranteed, but something they actually want to do. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, do you not want to be a dentist? Like, why be a dentist if you don't want to do it? And he said, well, it makes good money. He's, yeah. And he said that the things he's interested in doesn't really pay dividends. Like, that you can't really make money off of it. And I go, mm-hmm. what are your interests? And he goes, well, I like anime and manga and they're like dude you have no fucking clue you just showed up to the right fucking guy <laughs> like, we make so much money off of our fucking <laughs> podcast <laughs> that we don't monetize <laughs> well i was like dude you he was like this is your lucky night i'm like probably the one guy in this bar you're gonna have a great time with and we chatted it up for like an hour <laughs> yeah. and a half just being like yo bro fucking my hero academia yup 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 yo, yo, yup, yo mm. dude fucking angel beats i'm like hell yeah don't even get I haven't started. finished it but yeah dude it's pretty fucking good you know and then like we talked about like manga and stuff and I was like, dude, Zatch Bell. And he goes, fucking Zatch Bell. He's like, the anime, the manga. I was like, I saw them both. I've read them both. And he goes, fuck yeah, that's my dude. And then there were signs where we would be like, hey, I like this show. And he'd be like, that's fucking trash. I'm like, it's cool, man. Wow, you're bad. It's just your opinion or whatever. Like, he's like, I like this manga. Like, that's fucking trash. I was like, whatever. But we, um, made an enemy that night. (laughs) No, after talking, you know, we just like, we, uh, you know, we gave each other some recommendations. He told me to check out uh, this specific show he really likes. Steins Gate? No, I told, he hasn't seen Steins Gate actually. <laughs> yeah. Fucking loser. Andrew, get on your shit and watch Steins Gate. Uh, yeah, do it. Um, and so then, um, he gave me a show. I have it in my phone. I'm, I'm going to watch it later. He said it's a little older, but he said it's really good or that he really likes it at least. Um, Cowboy he said, Bebop? He said, give it four episodes. And he said, if okay. you're not feeling it, not to bother with it. I'm like, and I'm like, cool, man. He does, he, fa- he abides those rules. Like four episodes yeah. should be enough. You get, that's, that's a good amount. I'm yeah. Like, and in my head, I was like, good, good. This guy's not a fucking idiot, you know? Like, cause some people are just like, I have to watch all of it. No, you don't. Nah, fuck you. Yeah. And then he, uh, he gave me a couple other things. They're like, I think they, it was hard to understand he was saying, but it, I think they're like interactive, like web mangas or some shit like that. 
And um, he said, check him out. He said, try a couple chapters if I'm not feeling it. And I was just like, well, I've never done one of those before, but I mean, sure, I'll, I'll try it out. Why not? And I gave him like a recommendation of shows. And I told him about the podcast. So, Andrew, if you're listening, I'm going to check out those things. And uh, Andrew, if you're not listening, go fuck, fuck yourself. <laughs> I don't give a shit about you. I've never even met you, you my, piece of shit. My favorite part of the whole thing was yeah. uh, I go like, he, so like he doesn't know what he likes to drink or whatever I get, you know, yeah. because he's like, he's drinking Olympia, which is a shit beer, mm-hmm. but it's my favorite shit beer. Oh, okay. You know, so I was like, hey, man, that's not a bad beer. Like, and, you know, it's better than PBR in my book, at least, you know. And he goes, yeah, he goes, yeah, I kind of like, and he felt kind of weird, but he goes, kind of like like fruitier drinks and i go dude that's there's nothing wrong with that you know fucking bitch please yeah. that's all that i like <laughs> i was like fucking like if that's, that's what not you, true but if that's know. what you like to drink you know then fucking drink then and he goes you think they have fruity drinks here he's like oh bro they got fruity drinks like this place was made for fruity drinks and so then i get like the the, the bartender to bring over a menu and like we look at the things and I'm like okay so we we with this the bartender's help we pick one and we order and i pay for it and I'm like here drink it and he like devours it like fucking downs it pretty quickly and I'm like did you like it like because he drank it yeah. so fast he was like yeah it was like a blueberry mojito so i'm like yeah man yeah. the only way you're gonna know what alcohol you like is just trying them. Take some risks, just, baby. And if you hate it, then just don't finish it or whatever. Yep. It's not, it's not the end of the world. Um, so he drinks his thing. We're done talking or whatever, you know, we're chatting for a bit. And then he goes, okay, man, um, Juan, he goes, it was nice meeting you. I'm going to go to the bathroom and I'm going to, and then I'm going to go to the down, the basement or whatever. Cause I got to see about a girl. I was like, oh, fuck yeah. Andrew's got to go get it. So I had a really good time meeting him and it was fun. So that That's was my, wonderful. that was my Friday. Yeah. Good time. Yeah. I uh, I did nothing, like I said. <laughs> we talked about that. Did yeah. not. Yeah. Did I talk about? Mm, okay. Mm. Hey, I set up new internet, so that's pretty cool. Sure. Anyone that wants to connect to my Wi-Fi, the password is Chris Sucks sixty nine. So uh, it's Chris with the K Chris, and everything's yeah. lowercase, no spaces. Yeah. Hey, perfect. Chris Sucks sixty nine. You could find me uh, at my at my apartment actually. Yeah. It just says so that's a pretty big just move. Chris, just type in Chris Chris's apartment in Google Maps. will get you there. Yeah. Pretty much. I've been playing a fuckload of The Witness again. Whenever I start playing it, I can't stop. Yeah. It's a problem. I got three, no, four more puzzle areas, but I'm like procrastinating because I know once I'm done, I'm done. You can just play it again. I could, and I probably will. I like video games. Sekiro comes out this week. I'm going to play that. Is it like the Joe Roro game or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. That, Dude, I fucking hope it's like Joe Roro. That game looks fun. Kyle and I were talking about it, and we're like, if we just boot it up, and then it's like, party is over. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh, <gasps> no way. No one told you. Suddenly blast beats come in. He's like, yeah, that's me. That's me. <laughs> I'm Yeah, I'm ready for this game. It's going to be dope. Yeah, that, that does look like fun. It's the Dark Souls of Japan. Um, what about you for anime, man? What you been watching? I really enjoy anime. Yeah. Just wanna, I would like to preface, preface this it. episode by, uh, you know, going hey. back, play this at the beginning and then come back to really? here. Really? You like it? How much? Yeah. Do you have any, like, way to prove you like it a lot? Like, is there any, maybe some sort of award you've acquired because you like anime so much? No, but I've masturbated to a lot of hentai. I was trying to, you know, guide you into I know you were. Why don't you just do the thing I want then? Because I already had a joke queued up before you got that far. Was it the hentai joke? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, you started it, and I thought you were just going to ask if there was any way to quantify it, but then you went ahead and said award, and I was like, you know what? I'm still going to say that I masturbate to hentai. Anyways, you won some sort of award. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's talk about that so, real quick. Oh, fine. Uh, we made the top 20 list of some fucking top 20 list. Yeah about best anime podcasts so that's us yeah. Our new description for us is uh we kind of talk about anime and no, it, was, it was it was it uh, was kind of a review show kind of a new show kind of a new show all anime. all anime <laughs> that's us <laughs> so today so. today you said oh man i got so much news you showed me the news like hey man we're only kind of news cut that shit in half or whatever man i gotta i gotta fit it in where i could get it in you know yeah that was interesting because um i woke up this morning yeah. and it was like hey man thanks for everyone that entered like here here you fucking go here's the list and i was like what okay you- which one of you motherfuckers entered us because i didn't do this mm-hmm. you didn't do this no way who did this i couldn't tell you Honestly, no idea. But it was kind of a cool who, mod. I don't even know who the people are. It's like some fucking something blog dot something or whatever. <laughs> blog dot feedspot dot com. Never heard of them. But um, when I saw it, I was like, this is this is pretty cool. So I gave you guys the thumbs up emoji. It was also kind of like nine o'clock, I think, when I got all these tags. Mm-hmm. And then you and Sierra kept re- texting back and forth. I was like, I just want to sleep. So I turned my phone off because I didn't care. Um, I looked into it, though, like a little bit more into yeah. it. And it looks like... 
at first I thought, well, you know, people get awarded stuff all the time. And I was like, maybe we won just by default. They're just like, I guess there was only 20 podcasts this year about anime that started or whatever. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's some merit in people saying that. Dude, there fucking is. Here's the thing when it comes down to it. Uh, you have a limited amount of options for listening to your anime bullshit. Yeah. And honestly, people that want like full anime nonstop. Mm hmm aren't gonna get it with us ever yeah uh that's what it comes down to a lot of tangents and then you know sometimes a little bit of news and a little bit of yeah i mean we could go full anime but there's a part to it that's like you know what i'm a person too you guys okay yeah hopefully you like listening (laughs) like listening to us talk about ourselves before we kind of review the animes at the end Uh, you know the thing is people that don't watch anime mm-hmm. listen to the first half <laughs> and then don't listen to the last <laughs> the half people that like anime listen to the last, last half, half. <laughs> i love it what a weird fucking show that, that is, we have i do have a buddy in uh, seattle who listens to the show just to see what i'm doing yeah he goes like oh i think sierra's grandma would sometimes listen to the show Whoa. to be like yeah sometimes i like to know what you're up to I'm like that's kind of weird because i say the word fuck a lot <laughs> i i definitely drop a couple of fuck bombs yeah well anyways it's cool to be recognized for something again we don't get paid for this uh we just do it for funsies Uh, i was talking to a guy at a coffee shop today because that's what i do Mm -hmm. uh and he was asking like what what the whole deal is like if i started and like immediately monetized it or like what if it's more of a passion thing i'm like man it's entirely passion it's an entire excuse to get together with my boy and (laughs) talk talk about about a bunch of anime yeah Yeah. i mean we'd have this conversation anyways Mm -hmm. you know even if like we didn't have these mics we would would absolutely well we save a lot of our conversation now we do because because before we just hang out and talk about anime we're like well easy there is a dedicated time of the week that we have to talk about anime i mean it also started out with us like hanging out and being like all right well that was a good four hours of anime talk so uh (laughs) people listen to four hours of (laughs) podcasts right (laughs) some people do those people are crazy yeah those people (laughs) is wax Um, anyways listen to our previous episode starring at <laughs> duncan duncan's episode was long it was two hours long that yeah. was last week but i'll tell you what i've been listening to it because i listened to it for a couple of reasons just because it's the first time having a, a third guest while the two of us are here yeah it's, it's like a, a, an outside of the room yeah. guest and, too. and also like i wanted to hear what the audio sound like with like this through uh, the discord and him mm-hmm. giving us his audio and um besides you know the awkward pauses every now and then mm-hmm. i think it did pretty good and i really enjoyed it i think duncan was a uh, good uh, like he was a good guest good i would guest bring him back absolutely if you don't want to bring us to bring duncan back let us know tell us how much you hate him yeah like comment subscribe how much you hate him yeah and we'll make sure duncan never comes back okay so back to what i've been watching with the anime <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> No, it's okay. Good divergence. Mm -hmm. Um, So apparently this season of Slime is over. Mm -hmm. Uh, As it turns out, we're going to get a couple of spinoff episodes. Okay. So that's all good. But uh, that time I got reincarnated as a Slime, the story arc ended. Uh, I I don't know if I should give my review now since we still have a few more episodes. But anyways, I fucking watched it. So (laughs) there's that. I got a text from Sarah today saying, hey. Are you ever going to watch Slime with me or can I just watch the rest of it? I think we're like behind nine episodes. Yeah. And I go, honestly, just go for it. And she goes, finally. <laughs> I guess I just, I'm not, I wasn't feeling it anymore after a certain point. And I'm just like, okay, I'm okay with not watching it. Good call. Oh, well. <laughs> no, good call. Yeah, cool. Good for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's my review of Slime. Just good call. That's, that's going to be my review. Uh, we'll talk about that more in a minute. But man, there are some hot shows. Last week we talked about Mob Psycho 100. Mm-hmm. I'm going to talk about it again this okay. week. Uh, these episodes are popping off. Uh, spoiler alert. We are now reconnected with the Claw Gang from the first season. Uh, they've all converted to being good boys and Mob is like a super psychic son of a bitch, but he's been knocked out for the whole episode. So Dimple got to actually, uh, possess him mm-hmm. and do some like super magic stuff, which was pretty fun to see. Also, we got some big moments from our big old buff boys, which I fucking loved. I like the buff boys. It was boys. just a great previous episode. I, I'm super, we had an episode of air today. Every day that we record, we have new mob, uh, that we can't watch, new Dororo that we can't watch, and new, um, slime, usually, mm-hmm. that we can't watch. I, th- I don't know if there was a new episode today or not, but anyways, uh, I am really into the season of Mob Psycho. Mm-hmm. It's fucking awesome i um i was gonna say yeah i'm super excited i'm kind of bummed out that there's only like a couple episodes left yeah i know because it's yeah. not too core i don't understand why they don't go too core for mob i think mob could there's plenty of source material right mm-hmm. anyways i hope the next year 
or pretty soon we get at least a third season. That'd be really cool. Because this, this season has flown, that for Mob has flown by so quick. And I know. I've enjoyed all of it. Honestly. And, uh, well, there was a second where I was like, I don't really know. But then it was a two parter. And the second part made me go like, I'm an uh, idiot. I, I fucking hate myself. I get it now. You were very wrong. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It was all set up for the like, awesome fucking second episode. Right. Ha. Incredible. Um, yeah. This season of Mob has been outstanding. And everywhere on the internet, it, if it's somewhere people talk about anime, they're like, yo, this season of Mob is fucking amazing. And then other people come and they're like i should really watch this show and that's like all people say like i, think, I should really do it i think in the major that's the show that gets i mean besides my hero yeah um, mob gets talked a lot oh yeah about a lot in the major. i mean it's animation it's it's shitty enough that like any amateur artist can do it mm -hmm. but it's also so well put together yeah, so that pretty. you can't be an amateur in order to put it together in the way that it I think is you have to be a really good artist to then make your art look ugly mm -hmm. just, and have it still look good you know? yeah exactly yeah. it's it's a whole different level to it so i feel like that's why it's so impressive to people is mm -hmm. that they make something that looks amateur look good yeah for sure yeah, yeah. good show fantastic uh dororo let's talk about that for a second yeah. It is, I, I'm so happy that it's two core because I am way into this. The last episode we got finally focused on his brother. Okay. That we haven't seen at all. We just know that he exists out there and he's trying to do as much good as he possibly can. Uh, there's a town where all the people are dying from a big old monster in the lake uh, called a Charybdis. And essentially it's just a giant crab monster with a mouth on its back and it creates whirlpools. Yeah. Similar to in, uh, like Ulysses and stuff like that, like the Odyssey. Mm -hmm. Um, so we get to see his brother come to a town and all of the like royal, I guess it's not royal, like imperial guards and whatnot. They're with him. Uh, and they're like, are you fucking kidding me, guy? These people are talking about monsters. Monsters ain't real. And he's like, well, people aren't coming back. So even if it's not a monster, we got to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Turns out to be a monster. They fight it. Super badass. Final blow. Dororo comes in and he fucking kills it. Uh, and when I say Dororo, I mean the Hyakimaru. Yeah, the uh, the MPT guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Dororo's the kid. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, and this fucking episode was so cool being able to see that his brother is a good person despite everything and see how all the different towns and whatnot in the region did wind up flourishing because of this uh this pact that the father made to like give up yeah, yeah yeah and it's really cool to see how there are some negative effects too even though you want Dororo to live a or <laughs> yakamaro <laughs> or whatever <laughs> i get it <laughs> uh to have a good life and get all of his body parts back and just finally be happy and not have to suffer anymore it's also like oh these people are being severely affected by the change in their land like mm -hmm. it's not as lush it's not as prosperous it's pretty interesting to see that um and it's two cores so i don't know if they're going to team up with the brother or what's going to go on but i am way into this fucking show i think it's funny in your defense i mean more often than not the main character is the name of the show right oh, yeah. so like it's like i don't oh that's right Jorora is not the main character <laughs> i mean he's <laughs> yeah, important but he's, yeah yeah okay what else you got man? uh promise neverland was one of the strongest episodes Ooh, damn this, this because the last episode that we talked about had a lot of big moments. Mm -hmm. The one before it did too. Each episode I feel like gets bigger and bigger. And this one was the kind of like, we're fucked. We are fucked and there's nothing mm -hmm. that could happen until the end where you're like, hold on, <sighs> hang on. What the fuck? I mean, these kids are genius. Yeah. I, I knew it was going to be fine. I was, I was, I knew it the whole time, but you know, I did it, man. The whole time no, I was I know, happening, right? I was like, they're fucked. They're fucked. Right? And then and at the end I go, I go so hopeless. Are they fucked? Right. I was like, holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. And it's really, this episode was an absolute fucking treat as a manga reader. Mm -hmm. And I saw somebody say that and I was like, whatever. I mean, they've all been a lot of fun yeah, as a manga reader and whatever. Yeah. And then watching this, I'm like, Oh yeah. No, this episode is a what, treat. You're like, as a reader, this was a treat. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of foreshadowing in it. Yeah. You see like all these little elements and the kids like running around and stuff. And you're like, this is genius. What good fucking. Oh, can I say something real yeah. quick? I don't fucking trust Phil, man. <laughs> I don't fucking trust his little evil face. You're going to have fun next episode. Piece of shit. You are going to have Death so much Phil. fun if, next if, episode. If we had to sacrifice Phil because I don't trust him, I'm okay with it. No, because I don't trust him. You were gonna have a lot of fun with next we'll, we'll episode. See. I love this little story arc because they pretty much did. They make you feel so hopeless and mm -hmm. bring you in at the end. And reading it, 
I'm just still sitting there like, I can't believe Norman's dead. Like, they killed him off screen, but, like, he's dead. He's dead. There's mm-hmm. no fucking way he's alive. Like, yeah. he is dead. And uh, it was even more like, is he alive? Yeah. Is, is he a question mark? Yeah, that's yeah, how I feel like. This happened in the show. Um, But what I could tell you in the manga, as far as they've released, like, the actual volumes, not just, you know, what's out there. Because yeah, yeah. I haven't read up all the way. He's fucking dead. Like yeah, yeah. it's I've read at least through the second season, probably more than that. He's dead. Mm-hmm. It question mark? Yeah. <laughs> but now now I'm really confused. I don't know if the show's gonna go in a different direction or if he actually isn't dead and he's gonna become like the big daddy of everyone or what. I don't know, bro. But I I got pretty fucking mind blown that whole episode. It was so good. It was good. Promise Neverland is one of the best shows uh, of the season, mm-hmm. and I feel like it's going to be one of those shows that people constantly say, like, you know what? You don't know anime that well? Check this one out. This is incredible. We only got two more episodes, right? Like, it's... Uh-huh. This isn't too cool, right? No. Damn. Unfortunately, I know. Well, Feels at least, great, but at least but we know for sure this is going to get a second season. There's oh, no way it doesn't. It would blow my mind if it doesn't. Yeah. But, like, it, the thing about Promise Neverland as well is... It's really good in a lot of different ways. It does have like kind of weird scrunched up faces, like yeah, yeah. their faces a little bit small on their heads, which is weird. Um, but overall, it's just such a, a ride. Like you don't really know where it's going to go, but you know, it's going to go in a different direction every episode. Now, are their faces small or are their heads just very big? <laughs> big questions. Big questions. Big questions. We need I big don't know. answers. But, uh, it's really accessible to people that don't normally watch anime. Meanwhile, Mob Psycho 100. Is probably the best show of the season. Yeah. But I wouldn't recommend it to everybody. Mm, yeah. Promise Neverland, I would recommend to everybody. Well, yeah, I wouldn't recommend Mob Psycho 100 season two to everybody because I have to watch season one first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Uh, but Mob Psycho is definitely something that's not as accessible to people that aren't open to those different yeah, styles of animations. Yeah, you'd, have to, the, yeah, and you'd have to be willing to be like, it's, you know, to, you know, get used to the style or whatever. Because Promise Neverland, mm-hmm. even though they have the weird faces like we were talking about, you could just get is, right into it. It is a more traditional anime style. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then there's also Dororo, which I feel like has this really big Japanese influence, which turns some people off um, just because they feel like it's so intimidating and so foreign. Mm-hmm. And the fact that it deals with monsters and it is so fake. Even though the show is one of the most like raw and pure, like suffering kind of shows that I've ever seen. And it's thrilling every week to see it. I don't think that's for everyone either. Mm -hmm. It's my personal favorite show of the season, but I don't think it's the best show overall. I just think it's my favorite show right now. That's cool. Uh, And then I've also been watching some more of Endro. Still great. Still Mm -hmm. super dope. Way into it. Big moves all the time. Good shit. Watching some more flip flappers, you know, behind your back, just enjoying it, flipping, flapping, doing my thing. You know, it's great. I love my life, and that's pretty much all the anime I'm watching. Cool. Um, so I'm also watching Cross Neverland. We already talked about that. The show's really True. good. I'm excited to see um, how this season's going to end. And how do, uh, with only a couple episodes left, I, I want you to predict. I really what you couldn't, think might happen. I really couldn't predict because um, maybe I'm, the start. Like, you're very limited knowledge of like the manga mm-hmm. and what happens i think i mean i'm at the best guess i can have in the next two episodes they're either going to start the escape just going to be the the start of the escape and yeah. it's gonna cut there and that's where the second season would start off and maybe a time jump for the beginning of the second season but i don't know and that's just me throwing like a, honestly if that doesn't happen i wouldn't be surprised because i have no clue what's going to happen how do you think that they make the escape happen so that's what i want you to know a pulley Claire, system some guess. sort of catapult um, in a tunnel. I don't know. You think they're taking them all out? No, I don't know. I have no clue. Trip. I couldn't <laughs> guess how, how it's going to how it's gonna work. I was so excited for you to be like, what the fuck? Oh, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, man. All of those things at once. Yeah, I couldn't guess. Um, but anyways, I'm excited to see how the season ends. And whenever the second season comes out. Um, Hell, yeah. Really stoked to see. They continue, obviously. Um, what else? What else? I watched the uh, the Shield Hero. The yeah. show's still fine. I feel like uh, I'll... I, what I really liked about it was the beginning part, you know? Uh-huh. Oh, and, I watched some of that too. Sorry. Yeah. And, um, it's, it's just, uh, it, we've lost some of that. Like he's still, he still kind of pretends to be an asshole, it's, you know? Yeah. Um, it's changed pace. It's yeah. changed tones. And we, we kind of got to the point where like, so he acquired the raccoon chick and mm-hmm. she, that, that became his sword or whatever. She grew up or whatever. He got the, the egg and it yep. turned into a chicken and then the chicken turned into a, a little angel girl with wings. I'm like, okay, cool. He's collecting a crew. 
And then he collected, now he also got helped by this, like, the princess, the younger princess, one that's yep. not fucking evil. I'm like, okay, cool, he's just collecting a bunch of cute girls. She's using him, though. Uh, yeah, I know, but, like, it but. just, it just, it just, it feels kind of repetitive. I did like the bit where, like, at the very end, where, like, they're getting ready for the second wave. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, I mean, I don't know. I think this is based off a light novel, right? Yeah. Whatever. So obviously I can't read because there's no manga to it. Yeah. Um, if I, if I had to guess this show, just because of the way it plays out, I feel like I would, I would be kind of happy if at the end they end up failing mm-hmm. just because, um, usually the good guys win. Yeah. But I, I think because he's, from what we've seen, he's like the only real competent hero. Yeah. The other three heroes, they, do what they think they're supposed to do, kind of like like a video game or whatever. Yeah. But they don't actually see the consequences of their actions, you know? I love that this show is diving into that. Yeah, That's so what we, I think it's doing really, really well, is that we get to see, you know, the sword hero mm-hmm. went off and killed a dragon, and everyone was super thankful, but then everyone got poisoned because yeah. of it. And then we see that the, the bow hero, this one I fucking love, mm-hmm. he went off... And he started like forming these rebellions mm-hmm. to, like, to like usurp different nations some, and whatnot, yeah, some and, shitty kings or whatever. But only only to realize that like, yeah, the kings he got there that were evil are now gone, but he yeah. just got replaced by even more evil people. Yeah. Well, it turns out that they might not have been that evil because there weren't really many options at the time, mm-hmm. and they were trying to work things out. And the people that they put in power are just doing the same thing but worse. Yeah. Exactly. So and then the spear. Fucking warrior is just a total dumbass. Yeah. So what I'm saying is like, I'm saying like, so it looks like he's doing the best he can for the world. Mm -hmm. Essentially. He's also doing, you know, he's getting ready and preparing for the waves or whatever. He knows that's the overall goal. Um, but he's also fixing all the issues that the other people are doing. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get to the final fight or whatever. And these other three warriors just end up shitting the bed, you know? (laughs) Yeah. And it'd be like, cool. The fucking shield warrior can, hero can only do so much. And if he would lose, I would be like, wow, what a cool twist to this story who which i, mean, I would have thought that may happen but Realistically, also yeah i mean the, he might just win because yeah. he's the good guy and good guys wins or whatever i i'm kind of hoping that he starts teaming up with people and then uh everyone but the just you know the like oh man i want good things to happen everyone except for the spear hero yeah winds second. up doing good i agree i yeah. would like this as I like the spear hero the second a little day. bit of regicide would be cool as fuck too but Absolutely. whatever um so yeah so i'm still watching that uh what else i'm watching run with the wind Oh fuck! I um, Runny Boys. I must have forgot to watch Runny Boys this week. Eh? Yeah, I don't remember watching it. At least that's <laughs> okay. weird. I guess I missed Runny Boys. Uh, well, this week in Runny Boys, let Shut me just the tell fuck you, up. you didn't watch Runny Boys. Uh, that that um, I'm, I mean, I'm um, I think that's it. I don't think I'm watching any. That's probably all the anime I watched this week. Oh wow! Uh, so no JoJo. No, no JoJo's bizarre. Oh, okay, no, no domestic girlfriend. I am not watching that now. Okay, well that's fine. Um, oh, about- and I watched. I did watch Mob. I forgot about that. But oh, we are talking yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. What about the quintuplets? No, no, no. Hmm. Um, something I did watch though was uh, yeah? on Netflix. There's a new show called uh, Is it Love, Death, and Robots? Ye- uh, maybe. I think it's called Love, Death, and Robots. I thought it was called like Love, Sex, and Robots. So maybe it's Love, Death, and I think Robots. It's love, yeah, it's Death because the second emblem is a skull. So okay, well, whatever. So I'm watching Love, Death, and Robots. It's an anthology series. There's 18 episodes, and they're mm-hmm. kind of the size. The length of the episodes vary from like seven minutes to 17 or 18 minutes, and yeah. um, they're all anim- fully animated. They're all different styles, but by different studios, and they all have these the themes of Love, Death, or Robots, or a combination of those three in them. Mm-hmm. And man, am I fucking digging it! Um, as like an animator, right? It's cool to see like really quality, like top tier stuff. And all the themes are more or less mature. When I say mature, it's like, I wouldn't put a child in front of these, you know, like, yeah, this is for like a, a like an adult audience. And there are episodes that are a little more like, mm, tamed or whatever. It's supposed to be fun or whatever, but they also use like bad words and stuff it's like, okay, cool. So it, it's more appropriate for kids, still not appropriate for kids. Uh, but it's really gorgeous. I've watched, I think four episodes and the only reason I watched so little is because Pace. There, there isn't a lot of them, and I would like to pace myself because yeah. God knows when we'll get something as amazing as this uh, on Netflix or whatever or anywhere. Yeah, so true. You should check it out if you get a chance. I do want to. I'm working through Portlandia right now. Yeah, and I respect um, that. Which it's weird because there's a lot in it that I totally forgot. I used to be such a fucking hipster. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. I was like a hipster, but a huge goddamn nerd. So I'm over there just like listening to Grizzly Bear and the Mountain Goats and Broken Social Scene and stuff. And I'm so vibing on just like being chill and appreciating like every little thing and not caring about like anything as much as I could. Like that's how I wanted to be inside instead of like this anxious, broken ass mess. And then I'm watching the episode. And I'm like, 
oh fuck dude like that's, that's right that's yeah. who i was like trying to be <laughs> i was trying to be that piece of shit neat cool to see that trying to be king hipster huh yeah pretty much it was weird seeing that and like reflecting back on who i was and who i am now which is like i don't even know what the fuck i am now i'm just a guy doing a job watching some anime playing some video games just living my life that's you, man. Eating that Taco Bell. Let's get in the news. Yeah, we have a lot of news, so we're just going to try to get through this uh, because then we want to talk about the topic. And we don't want to be here of. for too long. Here we go. Okay, so... <clears throat> My Romantic Comedy Snafu Season 3 has been announced. Lots of people love this. It's got edgy elements. It's got some other stuff, too. People really like it. This third season coming out. Are you stoked? Pumped. Never seen it. Excited. Yeah, me either. Me too. All the time. <laughs> Hey, um, a little show called That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime. Uh, the second season has been announced for the year 2020. Who would have thought that a really, really popular show is going to get a second season? Not this guy. <laughs> Definitely not that guy. Oh, hey, by the way, popular things. So uh, this is a PSA. This is a big old public service announcement segment of our news. Popular things like Attack on Titan. Well, mm-hmm. just a heads up. Do not watch the recent Attack on Titan game trailer if you are trying to avoid spoilers for the upcoming season. They spoil some shit. They show a character that's not in it yet, uh, doing some stuff that you really? probably shouldn't see. Yeah. Just, just watch out. Don't, don't watch. Just watch out. That's, uh, good. I will watch out. That's okay. fucked up. That's, uh, that would ruin my day if I saw that. Hey, man, I got more. I got more of that later. Don't worry. Let's hear it. Okay, cool. So for now, hey, remember how you were talking about like Netflix two seconds ago? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was there too. Uh, so Netflix is producing several anime, uh, with its like deals with different productions, um, and producers and whatnot. Anyways, production IG, Bones, Anima, uh, Sublimation and David Production are all making some new shows with Netflix. Uh, so all these animes, let me just list them off really quick. Uh, they should be out in 2020 or around then, okay. but it's Altered Carbon Resleeved. So that's going to be a spinoff of their Netflix show, but it's going to be an anime. Okay. So think like the Animatrix, for mm-hmm. example, American shit that wound up not being so American or the uh, Blade, Runner. Blade Runner one. I, I was trying to remember the name of the Blade Runner animation. Can't remember it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever. Uh, also, Dragon's Dogma. Hey, people played that game back in the day. Now it's getting an anime. Neat. Oh, cool. Ghost in the Shell, SAC 2045. Okay. Okay? I probably won't watch that just because... I might. I mean, it depends on the studio behind it. If it's David Production, there's no fucking way I'm watching that. Really? I don't know what David Production does. If it's uh, Bones, I'll watch it. Sells at work. Oh, I like David's production. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, they were pretty, they're pretty, okay, they're pretty, they're pretty productive. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, Sprigan. I never heard of that. Yeah, I think I've heard of it. I don't remember why, though. So, anyways, Good that'll be that. in the future. Uh, Super Crooks and Vampire in the Garden. I think I've heard of that, actually. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's a uh, it's a spinoff. Or not a spinoff. It's a, like, I don't even know what to call it. Like a, a new series with characters that are, people should be familiar with. I think that's called a spinoff. But it's like, it's not a spinoff because it's part of the story, but it's like a new arc. Oh, it's a side quote. Okay. We'll yeah, call it a side It, it runs like simultaneously. Sure. Yeah. Something like, I don't know what the fuck it's the like, deal it's is. Like, it's like a Lion King one and a half. It's Lion King one and a half of the Super Crooks and Vampire series. Cool. <laughs> So, yeah, those are all the different shows that are going to be coming out, all the different anime from Netflix with their deals with uh, all the different studios. And, uh, yeah, none of the dates have been officially announced, but they are set to come out around 2020. Okay. Cool. Season three of Psycho Pass is set to air in October. We talked about it being uh, renewed for another season. It's October. So everyone buckle the fuck up and get ready for some of that. Hey, speaking of buckling the fuck up, a Shaft producer, uh, Mitsutoshi Kubota, yeah, <laughs> confirmed that preparations for the new Madoka project are underway. Nice. So this is big for fans of the anime, mm-hmm. uh, people that actually watched the show and didn't just watch the... Uh, compilation are you films. Making, is that a jab at me no i'm just saying that you didn't know can i explain so to you, if you watched i didn't the show, know it was a show and, i yeah, thought no, it was just movies yeah no that's fine so if you ever watch the show you'll get just as stoked as the rest of I us in the universe yeah i know you won't you have some weird thing about that but hey yeah. you know what man i got some bad news for <laughs> anyone in the world uh Calafina is disbanding they made music for different shows um like or they made music that was used in different shows like Madoka Magica, Fate Zero, and Unlimited Blade Works. 
So just a lot of different things that uh, these people made music that got used in anime, and now it's no longer around. So that's kind of a bummer. It's a bummer. Big sad. Big sad. You know what's not big sad? Hmm. Big horny. So Domestic Girlfriend released uh, its first episode, Uncensored. This came along with the 22nd volume of the manga. I, I think I had to watch this. I mean, you know what, man? You see some nips, you see yeah, some butts. That's what it must be just nips. Cause like, nips I, and butts, man. I still can't imagine it just being full on hentai. Like I just, I can't imagine. You see a condom? What? Yeah. Is there stuff in the condom? Like no, a it's penis? Like, in it's it? like in the wrapper. Oh, yeah. nice. Well, that's no. too sexy for me. You said they released it. Does that mean that they released it like on Crunchyroll or is it like, no, on? no, it's with the second or the 22nd volume, like in Japan. Oh, it's a physical thing. Yeah. It's a physical disc that well, they released. I'll just yeah. Look a, I'll look up. Which happens a lot with a lot of OVAs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It'll come out with the, the manga that I you can buy. You have to check it out on Reddit or something. Yeah, I don't know. It's out there. I'm pretty sure you can find it on like Vimeo or some shit. Pornhub probably has it hosted. Not kidding. I wasn't. Why did you look at me like I was because crazy? you didn't say anything? I was waiting for you to continue to talk. But yes, it's a, that's where I will find it. Thank you. Hey, so uh back to spoilers. OK, back, you know, we talked about Attack mm-hmm. on Titan, another PSA. Uh Those of you that don't check your email very frequently, like this matters now, it doesn't if you already checked your email so crunchyroll sent out an email to promote jojo's bizarre adventure golden wind and it contains spoilers uh which haven't aired in this current season so uh just a heads up if you do receive the email it's going to be in a character's bio so do not read the bios i know which character but i feel like it's a spoiler to say it just in case somebody has like an idea of something that might be going on can i ask can i ask a question yeah is it like is it explaining someone's power I, it's explaining something. I I didn't read it. Oh, you didn't read it. Okay. Yeah, no, because I'm not about to spoil a show that I may one day watch. Really? You think you might one day watch JoJo? Listen, man, if there's ever a good sub that comes out for it, because I've got a buddy who really likes JoJo, mm-hmm. and he's like, I don't know if it's for you or not. I'm like, yeah, well, I don't want to watch it on Crunchyroll because there are a lot of different kinds of like censorship and mm-hmm. rights based on the different like references they make to uh, media and uh musicians and whatnot like fully Cooley made a bunch of references to things and they had to bleep it out like boop 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 and it was like done as a gag kind mm-hmm. of this is an important part of the show yeah that i don't want to miss and i don't want to go and find it illegally and i don't know man i i just feel like it's not worth it but i might watch it one day if it's ever worth it okay <sighs> Hey, Jobless Reincarnation, I will seriously try if I go to another world, uh, will be receiving anime adaptation, which is currently in production. Okay. It, it's essentially about, you know, somebody who... It's got one of those long sucks. names. We talked about those last Some neat-ass bullshit, and then they get in, in another world, and they're like, I'm good now. So anyways, you want to talk about our topic for the week, One Week Friends? Yeah, this week we talked about... We're going to talk about One Week Friends. Cool. Do you Before know what we studio? Forget. Oh, my God. Spoilers. We'll forget by next week because of the way that this show is by the way, it's always on. If you want to um, watch the show, go for it because we are going to for sure spoil it. Oh, yeah. This has been out for a good like five years for now. For like ever now. So, yeah. yeah. So, we're telling um, you now. But no, spoilers. I, uh, heads up wasn't for me. Yeah. Um, I think it was fine. Yeah, it was fine. Did but, you... Yeah. Um, no, uh, what studio? I couldn't tell you, honestly. Okay. It was made by Brains Base, oh. uh, who's done Bacchano mm-hmm. and Durara. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah. Especially Durara, I think for the characters. Yeah. Um, just with their like hairstyles and whatnot, and I felt like. Kind of like, yeah, ex- yeah, the yeah. hairstyles. I feel like the, uh, they really were going for this like, this long connection between their like nose and chin. It was like a really long. Sure. Um, just the, the, like the way they drew it. I was like, hmm, every character seems to just have this similar shape. Right. But it was, uh, this, show is based off of a four coma manga which wow. i thought was interesting yeah uh considering the context of everything in the show that happens they try to make it like pretty dramatic mm-hmm. um in a way where you would need to watch the next episode see what else happens but a four coma manga i feel like doesn't have enough time to establish these characters it must be like really to, old or something like yeah it must really be a know. lot of it because to imagine having a four coma manga being like well, there's a story here. It's going to take a while to tell it all because we only have four panels. <laughs> but uh, the director is Taro Iwasaki, and he made uh, Sweetness and Lightning, which oh. I fucking loved. <laughs> and I was kind of surprised to read that afterwards, but it didn't surprise me too much. I'm like, okay, well, they're going for stuff with like a lot of heart, and this show very much has heart. So why don't you give us a breakdown of what the show is? Okay, so... um 
And if you don't say 50 first dates, I'm done. So it's pretty much like Groundhog's Day. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. so um, so it's it's about um, middle school kids, right? Uh huh. I would I think they're their second year of middle school. I can't really whatever. They're yeah. not. They're past sixth grade, so past seventh. I'm assuming. I think they're like in eighth grade. Honestly, they look like they could be. Like eighteen, yeah, they look like me in high school, but, but they also look like they could be ten. Yeah, they the it's really confusing because adults seem to also look very young. Yeah, the the art style was very like we're not talking about the art style yet. <sighs> everyone's the same age. Yeah, they're youthful. Anyways, um, so it's about a, a you know group of people in middle school, and um, our one our main character uh it wants to become friends with this girl in, in his class who seems to be really uh cold distant yeah. you know seems to just just sit there no one talks to her she doesn't talk to anybody she's she just does her work so he mm-hmm. asks her to be her friend and she doesn't take it very well and just kind of runs away and then he kind of finds her in the in the roof of the school and they talk or whatever and he realizes oh she's like a nice person and um there seems to be some sort of sadness within her and then we find out that um Every Monday, I guess past weekend after Sunday, her memories are erased of her friends. Not like the memory of like she has her family, you know. Yeah, kinda, she remembers that. She, she remembers, remembers her family. She remembers going to school. She remembers like Definitely. all the stuff you learned. But any memories that are connected to some sort of friendship, gone. Yeah, um, it's because she cares about them, and that's how whatever. Like, like there's she, a character that she is friends with but like not like good friends or anything just yeah. kind of like they just you know she, he's around yeah exactly so and she remembers him so it's some sort of she suffered some sort of trauma that has affected her brain where she, she, if she comes to care to somebody or have some sort of friend or build some sort of friendship her memories of that last week will be erased or whatever and um that's kind of the whole bit so yeah it is kind of 50 first dates mm-hmm. we, we were talking about it um earlier when you texted me you're like this is 50 first dates like i guess kind of i mean sort of it is except like it's a week instead of a day. Yeah. And it's also, she's aware it's of it. A you know, specific thing. It's a very specific it's thing. It's got a lot of layers when, to it when that I don't fir- really matter. When I first heard about like, um, when I was kind of, when we were talking about watching the show and then when I started watching it, I was under the assumption that she forgot her memories and it wasn't just like her recent memories and it wasn't specifically to just a friend. Right. Um, and then when it was explained, oh yeah, she loses the memories of friends that she makes. I was just like, huh. That is way too like niche. Yeah, this is like way too out there to actually make sense. Yeah, and later my, on they go on and try to explain it. Like, yep, she just has some kind of trauma for one reason or another. It, the that's doctors it. don't know why. You know, yeah. it's just so when I remember hearing that, and remember like at first I was just like, this is bullshit in my head. Like, yeah. I cannot dis. I can't, I can't come to to bring myself to disbelieve that this is an actual thing where she can. Yeah. So she can't remember just friends. You know. Um. By the end of the show, I was like, you know what? The Whatever. brain, the brain's a really weird thing, you know. God fucking knows what happened, and sure, I guess why not? You now know? here's here's some fucking shit that pissed me the fuck off, though. Mm. All right, so you have a daughter. Yes, she's great. Yeah, she gets hit by a car. Sure does. Huge head trauma. Big head trauma. Yeah. She uh she comes out of it. She wakes up. Everything's good, and then she doesn't remember who her friends are. Yeah. And then you take her home and you're like, oh, well, it looks like she has to deal with it forever. <laughs> like, why the fuck wasn't she in therapy or something? I They're mean, just like, hey, man, her brain's all fucky, wucky, oingo, boingo. Doctors alive. don't know what to do. It's like, you know what, man? Maybe talk about this shit. Like, maybe, it, it causes her physical pain yeah, trying actually, to remember people. Maybe yeah, I, maybe she makes up, with, the mom makes up with the fact that she makes really good baked goods. The fact that she's a shitty mother. Maybe. 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 I mean, maybe it's implied that they did do a lot of testing and it just didn't work. Did out. you feel like it was implied? She, they do have a throwaway line where they go, the doctor says she's fine. Yeah. So my head is like, well, doctor said she's fine. <laughs> so, so yes, she's so totally yes, okay. So yes, it was heavily implied that they did all they could do for their daughter. Yeah, it was really strong handed. Just like we've done everything we could do. She's broke. No, my, my issue with this is something that kind of pissed me off. If she did have this, this condition or whatever, mm-hmm. I, you know, and I've seen like, like shit be brought up in that are way less important in, yeah. in schools, you know, like I've had times where like new kids come in and like the teacher comes up in front of everybody goes like, Hey guys, this is our new student. This is Jacob. He's allergic to peanuts. No one give him a peanut. Yeah. And now everybody's aware that Jacob is allergic to peanuts. Right. Uh-huh. So why couldn't like after this, like, why doesn't there like a beginning of the semester? The teacher goes like, this is our fucking main character chick. Uh, she has, she wasn't some sort of accident and now she can't remember friends. Everybody be nice to her. 
She won't remember you, but be nice to her or whatever. Or why is the idea of a oh. diary not just brought upon by somebody else? It's not like a, like, I don't know. It's a not doctor. like a, yeah. <laughs> it's not like a, you know, like a, a revolutionary idea, you know, notebooks exist, diaries exist. Yeah. So when the, when the main character suggests, maybe you should keep a diary of every week and then read it on Monday and you'll know. And she goes, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what the fuck? I, okay. So yeah. The, yeah. Without a doubt, the, like the, the premises and like the, of the story isn't, isn't you flawless. gotta suspend that disbelief, my boy. You gotta, yeah, suspend the shit out of it. Put it all the way at the top and suspend <laughs> it. Um, no, but yeah, there's, there's parts where it's like, oh, come on, man. Like, really? It, this dumb knuckle skull that doesn't know fucking math came up with the bright idea of a notebook and pe- that the mom's like, thank you so much for helping my daughter. Yeah, bitch, cause you ain't helping your daughter. Like, yeah. So long story short, they become friends. He says like, Hey man, make a notebook. That way you can remember everything. She starts writing everything down, like about him in particular. Mm-hmm. And she's very clearly got a crush on him that she won't admit. And, and he she has doesn't a crush realize. On, he has a crush on yeah. her. And then one, one part, he has a, a really good friend. His closest friend is like a pretty straight faced, like do nothing. Like, Hey man, I'm just like the big broody guy, but also I'm pretty introspective. Can we talk about this real quick? Yeah, we absolutely can. God, I fucking love him. Yeah. I wish I could have been the brooding guy at school. I would have loved to be so just brooding and a man of few words. Yeah, it's but that's great. not the personality I have. It, here's the thing. I liked him a lot. I, I liked, liked all the things he did, but then there was one point where I was like, Hey motherfucker, be finish your shit. What, uh, what, man. What part was that? So <laughs> there's a part where they've made a new friend who's like a, a complete ditz and she's like oh man i wish that i forgot things every week i forget things every day and i never know what uh, it's gonna yes. be yeah. right so uh she's off hanging out with main character coon and uh then we get to see chikorita jones who forgets everything hanging out with a broody boy mm-hmm. and they're chilling in a shop and he's like hey man big question how what do you, you feel think, my boy yeah what do you think about my boy and you she's DTF, like yeah. uh what do you mean exactly and he's like well let me just say this do you think about like things that he does a lot and do you think about him in a way where you really care about him and she's yeah. like "Ooh, you're embarrassing me yeah and he's like okay cool uh so anyways that means that you and she's like what oh what's that mean and i get like, what you're saying Never, Never mind. mind. Bye bye. It's like, whoa, man. Okay, so you brought this up. What did you want to accomplish? You already knew that she liked him. You already knew that he likes her. You're trying to make her realize it, but then uh, you're but not she's gonna forget her memories it. yet. I get, I get what you're saying. I understand your issue. I got so mad. Just like, do. hey, man, you should just come out and be like, hey, I like you, yeah, and write it in a, your goddamn diary. Yeah, stop being a fucking asshole and say what you mean. Uh, um, the thing that is, pissed me off about him. The thing is, uh, with a lot of these, there's just a lot of tropes in this show, mm-hmm. you know, that um, that come hand in hand with these shows that are about like teen love you know so one yeah. of the tropes is you know everybody knows that they're in love but no one tells them because it's it's right. on it's them to find out right it's a big deal yeah and there's other ones where it's just like you know there's the falling down and you know falling and then landing on top of the chick that's just a trope that this always, is an anime trope but though. that also is huge in, yeah. these, in these weird middle school things. every single time it's like oh shit awkward situation we should get out of this but instead of like moving or anything they, they just, just kind of hold stay the pose, there for yeah. a while and then mom comes in and is like oh you two are fucking let me get let, out of let here me not like i wasn't fucky wookie i promise yeah there's also yeah, there's just a lot of things so i understand and um you know, I love love. We've talked oh, yeah, about this. Absolutely. I love love. And I love middle school love. It's some of my favorite kinds of love. You know what? I had a good time with the love in this. Mm-hmm. Um, I have some issues, but I had a good time with the love. You know one issue that I did have with this show? Um, every fucking body was blushing. Except for uh, homie boy, the tall guy. Uh-huh. Everybody was blushing Everyone all blushed the time. All the time. And then they, would, they had so much fucking love. And those times where they were like, they would blush more because they, yeah. something that would make them blush actually occurred and uh-huh. so they would blush even harder yeah so i was like "Ooh, tone down the blush i get it bro. it's hardcore I, it just looked like they all had fevers um, true so like when i like y'all need to lay down so when tall boy blushes because uh, you know some romantic stuff happens to him mm-hmm. it's like cool this is warranted because guess what he's a very straightforward kind of person yeah and we finally see him have some sort of romantic emotions. This is great. Oh, it turns out that he actually cares about Dummy Wummy. Dummy Wummy is cool. I like them both. They're they're a cute couple, bro. Yeah, ship them. So here's kind of my issue. Every character is like one toned. Oh yeah. Uh, we got Broody Boy, and he's pretty much broody and he's smart, so hot. and he's tall, blonde hair. He's the perfect man. True. Uh, and his whole deal is that he's a solid foundation for the whole group despite it, him not being like the main character or any part of that he's just kind of along for the ride and then it turns out he has a big role in everything i guess also his like uh the one flaw he has is is kind of like he he's very straightforward right yeah. so like the words he says he, he doesn't 
doesn't mean to hurt people, but he no. says, calls it how it is, which be, can, could be considered as like very rude or whatever. He's a little bit more emotionally distant, but he's aware of everything and he's except smart, for himself. You know, but yeah. that becomes like a, you know, so that, that does become an issue when he yeah. does the whole, hey, I know you like him, but I'm not going to tell you because right. f- fuck me, I guess, right? I thought that was dumb, but, but I understand. Yes. Very. That was his, that was his character. So you have really typical ditzy girl who forgets everything all the time, mm-hmm. but they like, take it to a new extreme where she's just forgetting like literally everything. To wake up and go to school or, yeah. you know, that she has homework or people's names, you know, like you're those two boys that I see all the time. Sorry. She would be definitely in a special class that would help her more with what she needs. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not making no, jokes. No, I'm not making jokes either. She I'm would. Like, this is legitimately where she should be. I, she needs extra help. I guess, I guess. I guess the, 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 the part that like the saving grace of the only reason she's not is because she's so cute and adorable and everybody loves Everyone her. Everyone wants to help her. Everybody wants to help her. Like, yeah. She's just, oh, I know she's <laughs> dumb as fuck, but she forgets everything because she's so fucking cute. So adorable. let's get to the two worst characters. The main characters. Our main characters. Yeah. So the chick, she just forgets everything every week. Mm-hmm. She becomes really upset at anything. Very uh, quickly. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, hey, we're friends. She's like, fuck you i don't know you rape rape <laughs> just like the second that he starts talking to her and like it's a little bit closer she freaks the fuck out whatever main character guy i'm pretty sure he's never cared about a single thing in his life until this chick came around which blows my mind because his personality is i want to help her because i like her why does he like her yeah, I, the way she looks i guess but what's funny is it like it's like i want to help her um and they're like oh and then he he's always like questioning himself me like am right. i really helping her like i was just you know being a friend or whatever I was like dude you're obviously there's obviously something you want this like you want to help her because you're like a good person or something don't yeah. just be like oh i don't think i'm helping you you're absolutely helping this girl her mother's not giving her help her father's not gonna help someone has nobody's to help her. doing shit nobody's um, dad's around which i always find interesting in these shows but i figure that they're working like another 70 hour work week or whatever what's yeah what's super interesting too is that um like the girl has this like almost split personality where she like when she's in her room because yeah. she is a good sweet person right oh, but when yeah. she's in the classroom she's just total like cold like, bitch don't talk to me i hate everyone and then when you see her in the roof and they talk to her she's like like just this typical you know best girl super cutesy or whatever and we're just like but she still has like no personality other than being kind and, and sweet and then she also does shit like okay cool thank you so much for being my friend you know on on the fucking roof don't fucking talk to me in class like mm-hmm. what a weird thing to say to somebody it's weird as fuck I'm going to, for a second, bring up Anohana. Yeah. As the an worst example, show ever, yeah. The worst show. As an example of how you make interesting characters. Mm-hmm. Each character has their own thing. And you know what's going on. In this show, you don't see any particular personality traits and like, what do they enjoy? What do they do? Everyone just does the same thing. Hang out, talk about their current situations, but never about what they're into lately. Mm-hmm. Uh, or they do homework. That's yeah. pretty much it. But then there's a show like Anohana. Or they drink stuff. They also drink stuff. They do drink some stuff. Uh, there's a show like Anohana where all of the characters have some really strong personality things. Our main character plays a fuckload of video games. He's a big old fucking weeb ass piece of shit. Uh, and then we find out that, oh, the girl that's trying to be super popular is actually a huge ass weeb. But she's in disguise. pretending. Yeah. yeah. And then they bond over like, oh man, remember Nokimon? And they bust that bitch out and they start playing it. You have a few small moments that really blossom their personalities Mm -hmm. by just showing that they have these other interests and these other cool things versus like just who they're hanging out with or like what they're doing. They like crepes and they like doing math. Okay. Leave them alone. No, I understand. I get what you're saying. You know, Anahana does a better job of like making these characters feel more fleshed out and like more like people as opposed Mm -hmm. to when they were writing the character it's like yeah forgets memories super sweet okay next character like, uh eats his octopus wieners backwards and everyone's like that's genius that's that's a fucking character fucking sh- right there yeah fucking ship it send it send it the presses <laughs> um another thing i'd also just like about the main character's personality or lack thereof personality he he wants to help the girl you know because i guess obviously he likes her yeah but he um, also but, feels down about himself and but, but he doesn't actually he doesn't admit or maybe realize he likes her yet because he's stupid yeah but there's also the bit where like the the, the girl starts acquiring other friends and mm-hmm. she, he becomes jealous that i feel like that's a totally normal thing for him to do though just like yeah. wait but he became jealous because first off uh she remembers somebody else that's not me like i'm trying so hard and she doesn't remember me and he doesn't realize like oh that means that she cares They're about not me as more. important yeah no yeah. but like he becomes but it's like it's i I get that bit like that part i was like oh it's jealous and it was kind of funny like oh he's like he doesn't he's so uh-huh. dumb he doesn't realize she doesn't actually consider this other tall brooding guy his her friend right yeah 
But it be, it also can't kind of recurs further in the show where it's just like, Oh, I'm jealous. I can hang out with the girls and go get crepes. Like, yeah, cause they're having girl time and calm your fucking tits, dog. It's, it's obviously not time for you to hang out with your friend. You know, yeah. you also do hoard her all the time and the fuck. She makes you fucking food every day, you know? Hey man, can I, can I bring up uh, a little thing about this show that mm-hmm. bothered me more than anything else? Yeah. So. I don't know if you remember when you were in junior high. Sure do. Okay. So you had a few friends, right? Yeah. And, uh, did you get them in the middle of the semester or did it kind of like, well, I got all my friends. Mm, what do you mean? Did I like, acquire friends? Like where you suddenly just like, I'm going to suddenly have a group of friends. Oh, I get what you're saying. No, because this I didn't. is what happened. Our main character knew one guy. Mm-hmm. They were best friends. They're the only people that know each other. It turns out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, this girl that forgets everything all the time, she's like, I don't want to make friends. I don't want to hang out with anybody. And then she winds up being friends with them. Whatever. That one makes sense. But then there's also dumbass mm-hmm. who doesn't have any fucking friends. And then she suddenly turns out that she can make friends really easily. And it turns out she acts actually has a bunch of friends yeah people that like her yeah nobody hangs out with any of them but each other so broody boy doesn't hang out with fucking anyone Mm -hmm. main character coon doesn't hang out with a single person uh forgetful chick has a ton of friends but apparently she just only hangs out by herself or with these three others yeah yeah. and there's like forgets everything girl i get what you're saying it is it is a weird thing to be like yeah no but there's also the point where like um this short chick shows up and says like oh i'm I'm gonna be friends with so-and-so and our main character goes like hey you're you're from our class, right? But doesn't know her name. Yeah. How do you not know the person's name in your class? Because, like, I understand in middle school, we would, like, you would switch rooms and stuff, and maybe you would switch students. But for the most part, I knew almost everybody was in my class. The classes aren't that big, you know? Mm-hmm. So how do you not know, oh, yeah, that's fucking Shin or whatever. She's a dumb bitch. Like, how do you how do you not remember something like that? I mean, man, there are some shows where it's just like, I'm going to go out of my way to not know anybody. Like maybe, I don't know, I want to eat your pancreas. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that one's a little bit more like, yeah, this guy's got some severe fucked up psychological yeah. bullshit. In this show, it's like, oh, main character with no personality doesn't remember some girl because who fucking cares? It doesn't matter. Nobody cares anyways. What's funny is that like she doesn't remember her friends, but she remembers kids in her class. Right. So it's like. Mm-hmm. I guess that's kind of sad. I guess she doesn't have friends, but she remembers fucking dumb. She could remember dumbass as mm-hmm. long as she doesn't consider her a friend. Easy. She could remember. She remembers brooding boy. They're yeah. not friends or whatever. At no point did she say, "Oh fuck, I forgot who you were," because I guess they never become friends. The o- which is also like, excuse me, you hang out a lot and you also like each other. The so only one I feel not like, like 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 but like the only one I feel like she totally forgot was our main character. Like we never because there's bits where like, there's like a there's a small period where she's like, hey. I just knew it was you. Yeah. Like, as soon as you showed up, I was like, that's the fucking guy that I know. Yeah, but, like, there's also bits where there's one part where she's, like, flashing back, like, remembering being, like, do, like going to karaoke, you know, being on the roof. And, and there's, like, like scribbly boy. scribbly out, right? We don't, don't ever see that ever come up again with anybody else. So, it's, like, yeah. it's never, like, I don't know, it's just weird to be, like, she has these other people. I guess she doesn't actually consider them friends because it's never clear that she doesn't remember who they are. Mm-hmm. Um, so... I'm going to quickly go through the plot and, All right, like, let's and, fucking and, and then fly. finish it and then uh, like finish oh, with the ending. Spoiler, was. I did not watch three episodes because you got done. to a point where yeah. it was like, and we're dramatic for no reason. And I'm like, okay, well I'm done for no reason. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> okay. So we were talking the beginning bit in the main part, like she becomes, her, he starts suggesting her having a notebook and then that yeah. really helps her a lot. Absolutely. And then she collects, um, she becomes friends with a short girl. She becomes mm-hmm. friends with the tall brooding boy, yeah. kind of or whatever. Uh, sure. It, whatever. And they start doing things, building memories. And then uh, she gets sick, loses her notebook, uh, and loses the sign on her door that says, hey, so-and-so is your friend or whatever. Yeah. Um, so she forgets all her memories. Essentially, all the progress that the guy had made had, was just gone out the window. And that was kind of a bummer. Yeah. I was like, oh, my, oh that's sad. Um, I liked that part of it. Yeah. I thought that that was well done. I also think it was well done because in my head, I was like, I was like, the, the logistics of all this I'm like hmm you know this notebook thing it could work you know but then i was like well what happens when the notebooks becomes 20 notebooks can mm. she read 20 notebooks yeah that's be- kind of what i was thinking before, too before you know on monday or whatever well what happens is she starts taking cliff notes she's like here's everything but here are the important she things she should just say like, like uh like starter cards like baseball players goes, yeah this is hasakun or whatever in the bag she's like bad at math kind of an asshole i love him you know or whatever <laughs> um <laughs> So that's that was one plot point that I really liked because yeah. we, we did see the characters. He went out they of his to way start from like stage yeah, start, one kind of, and but. then and then he was like 
we also see her kind of remembering him, you know, because she, mm-hmm. her, her memory does get better, um, as the thing progresses. Yeah. Uh, and then the, ne- the next big plot point, I guess, is, um, I think, I mean, nothing really bad happens after that, right? Like they just kind of just become, I mean, they, for a while, yeah. They're just kind of friends. Um, that, the next thing is like, um, the, the new boy shows up. Is that the, the next yeah, plot point? Yeah. They're like trying to get really good at school and they're like, man, we fucking did it. We all learned together and we're such good friends we're now. We're such good friends now. And then, uh, episode ends and I was like, okay, a little teaser after the credits. New boy shows up. New boy's here. And then he goes, I'm back in Tokyo. I didn't yeah. know they were in Tokyo, by the way. Yeah. No, I learned that right then. And I also learned that there are other characters that I'm supposed to care about. This would have blown my fucking mind if I had seen him in like previous pictures with like parts of him blurred out and then been like, yeah. oh, this is kind of an important thing going this on. This is, uh, it will, and this is what episode eight. nine, eight, uh, nine? it's episode eight and then episode nine has him in it. So in my head, like, so when I saw that too, I was like, cool, this needs to get resolved in the next three episodes. Here we go, boys. Let's yep. wrap up our sleeve, roll up our sleeves and get this done. So what happens here is, the boy shows up. She becomes a new transfer student. Everything's perfectly fine with, you know, our, our friend. She's remembers our main the character. The whole gang's pretty well. doing great. Everything's doing great. Better than ever. He introduces himself. And then he goes, the teacher goes, okay, sit in your new chair because everybody got assigned new seats. Yeah. He has to sit next to the main character. And he gets main character spot, like from all anime. He gets the golden seat. The golden seat, yeah. He sits in the golden seat and he goes like, huh, it's you or whatever. Like she, he knows who the girl is. Like, oh, she obviously doesn't know who he is. And he like, goes like, hey, aren't you you? And she's like, uh, yeah, yeah who, who the, the fuck, fuck are, are you? you? Yeah, really intense. And he's like, I'm, I'm the fucking guy that was just up there that was introduced. You don't remember me? I'm in, I'm in the golden seat. I'm the, you bro, know, I'm, I'm the main new, character. I'm the new main character, show. bro. <laughs> no, and then he says something like, uh, like, huh, makes sense. You wouldn't remember me or whatever. And he, again, not like, knowing, <sighs> not knowing any of the situation. And he goes, and he goes, you fucking traitor. Yeah. And then she has a huge headache and collapses in class. She also says his name and then like dies. Yeah. Yeah. It passes yeah. out. She wakes up in the infirmary. Our main character goes like, oh my God, thank God you're okay. I'm so happy you're She's awake. Like, don't touch me. Rape. Yeah. Rape. So it's very aware that she has now lost all her memories again. Yeah. Big and loss. All the progress of her, like retaining memories has also yeah. been gone. So well, it's, cause she, she remembered like just a few details, which were enough for her to be like, oh, she, she actually knows how to have a personality now. That's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And her personality was just like, I remember my friends. Yeah. And she's also not like a, she's also just not like a bitch in class anymore because she's no. like, I can kind of be nice. I so can talk to people. She does her notebook thing again. Our homie goes back to fucking bases and starts like, yeah. okay, cool. I'm gonna- you know what? This is where I stopped. I was like, okay, drama. She forgets it. She's being yeah. a dick. That other guy's here. I don't give a shit. Like, whatever. Two episodes away or three or whatever. So he, you know, he starts doing the thing, going in motions, going back to the fucking what, the roof, yeah. having lunch with her again, just kind of like in the beginning. And uh, we get to find out that um so this character was in sixth grade with her and again it's, it's kind of cryptic for a bit he's like purposely like not saying stuff or whatever yeah or maybe he's also not aware of the situation that she had an accident but he's just being kind of rude or whatever but he's also super cool and the new bad boy or whatever you know um i think they have an encounter at the crepe shop and it's like the main character the, the new boy the girl and then two other girls from junior high or never middle okay school. yeah and they kind of go like oh it's you or whatever and she has another meltdown. She doesn't faint, but she like runs away in a panic. And our main character sees that or whatever. And he's like, what the fuck happened? And the, the new douche transfer student goes, I don't fucking know. Like how, she just ran away or whatever. Like, Cause realistically, he wouldn't understand what the issue is, you know, because no one's told him, Hey, by the way, you know, fucking hey, so and so forgets her memories and doesn't remember what happened. She giant su- fucking news. She suffered some sort of trauma in sixth grade, you know, and like, he doesn't she was know. hit by a car. Like now she can't remember people. It's kind of a big deal. You just like triggered her, but like no big, you didn't know it, but like now you know. So I think it's episode, I want to say it's like episode 10, maybe 11 or whatever. Um, we finally get like the conversation that we're all waiting for is like, dude, just fucking, I, we want the new transfer student to tell us what happened. What happened. What happened. So we can, so we can know what happened or whatever. So and what, then we could fix our brain. Yeah. So what, yeah. So they could just flip the switch or whatever. Easy. So what happened was apparently, um, he was moving away and then he invited her to like some sort of park or whatever to, to say goodbye because they mm-hmm. were, they were special friends. They had a relationship kind of like our main character in her head. They yeah. weren't dating or anything, but they like, they cared they about each big other. Homies. They were really yeah. good homies, right? So he was leaving. So he invited her here. But before that, um, a bunch of schoolgirls who were jealous, who were also in quotations, this girl's friend mm. brought her together and were mad at her and being like, I can't believe 
that, you know, you're going to say bye to him by yourself and all, blah, blah, blah. It's super selfish of you. You know, so-and-so really likes her or whatever. You're a piece of shit. We don't like you. We all hate you. And like, they like just bash her essentially. And so she can't take it. So she runs away, gets hit by a car. And then when she wakes up from her fucking concussion or her, it wasn't even a coma. She was just out for a couple. Was it a coma? I don't know what the fuck it was. Eh. She, they said she had a mild concussion, but when she wakes up from it, she, the girls who are explaining this to our main character and um, fucking transfer student boy, because those are the two girls that know yeah. the story. They're like, yeah, she woke up from her fucking whatever, her slumber, and she pretended like she didn't fucking know this. Ha, ha, ha. It's so weird or whatever, right? It's like, guess what? That's what fucking happened. Yeah. So. Mind you, while this is all happening, our main character girl, this is happening in a restaurant, yeah. by the way. Our main character girl was at karaoke, and now she is at um, the restaurant because they want to go get something to eat, and she overheard all of this. She drops her fucking book bag and starts crying, and they take her home. The next day at school, our main character's like, hey, yo, I'm really sorry. And she's like, hey, it's fine. She goes like, I think this, I think it's something like this. Like she says something like, yeah, I'm, I'm not even sad about it. I'm just kind of, it feels kind of weird. I'm kind of relieved that I, now I know why I'm the way I am, you know, like mm-hmm. why I have this trauma. Yeah. Um, you know, but she goes, but yeah, that doesn't like change anything. I'm still like right. this, you know, it's like, and then it's like, okay, cool. Well, Let's still be friends or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I was like, in my head, I was like, is that it? Is this how this ends that, or whatever? Yeah, is that it? But it's they somehow pack in, in two episodes, more drama. Okay. So I don't know if you got to the bit where, like, the, no. the short dumb chick was had a fight with the big tall guy. Uh, they didn't have a fight, but it was more so, like, he gave her homework and they fell in love. Okay, so, yeah. So you, <laughs> yeah, I think so. you did miss that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, they, yeah, they do have feelings for each other because they have some back history of, like, they went to elementary school together. He yeah. felt bad for her about, like, being dumb, so he gave her homework. Um, So, she is the dumb chick, the small dumb chick, is talking to a big broody guy. And he's like, yeah, he's like, you know what? Uh, I This is the way I am or whatever. I'm just kind of like a ditz. You know, I forget stuff all the time. Like, But uh, I've decided, you know, that... I'm just going to find someone that I can depend on, someone that can help me, that can, you know, care for me the way that, you know, that I need caring or whatever. Yeah. And then he goes, okay, cool. And he's just like, oh, you, I'll just fucking pick you. You'll just be my husband. And fucking big brooding guy goes, no, bitch, and bops her on the head, which I thought was super funny. Yeah. Bops her on the head and he goes, I'm leaving. And it's just like, okay, cool. He leaves and he's flustered because he's, the the idea of being in a relationship is like gotten to him because he's he's obviously a person Mm -hmm. and she feels weird about it so in these two episodes she feels she can't talk to him anymore and okay and she's just like i I got got to that part right so 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 she's avoiding him like very obviously avoiding him she also gets the other girls together and says hey i need you guys help you know so and so is mad at me or whatever and i don't know what to do and blah 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 all this stuff and so our big smart dude, you know, big yeah. brooding guy, not being an idiot, puts two and two together. And so he kind of follows her and goes, Hey, can we talk or whatever? And they start talking and he goes, what the fuck's your deal? You're like, you're avoiding me. And he goes, she goes like, what are you talking about? It's very clear you're avoiding me. Why are you avoiding me? And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. He goes, look, if you don't like me like anymore, then just let me know that way. You don't have to talk to you anymore. You know, cause he's just again, very straightforward. Mm-hmm. And she goes like, how could you say that? Like, obviously I like you and that's why I want to talk to you and blah, blah, blah. She's like, you're mad at me because I said I want you to be my husband and all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. And, and he goes like, oh, I understand. And he goes, I'm sorry. And she goes, oh, wow, I've never heard you say I'm sorry. He's like, he goes, and then he says, well, usually, you know, I, I don't say sorry unless I, I think I'm wrong. And I guess in this situation, I am wrong. So sure, I'm sorry. And then she goes, cool, can we like, like still be friends or whatever? And like, can I depend on you and whatever? And he goes, yeah, sure, I guess. So cool. Now they're in some weird romantic relationship good that's done out of the way good job and also in these last two episodes our main character is being a real dick to our our chick like the main yeah. chick and the reason he's being a dick is because he's talked to the new transfer student and says some shit like he says yeah me and so-and-so were super close friends and she helped me with math and that was kind of like our thing or whatever and he's just like oh, she helped me with math you know I'm like they have a special friendship is what they cried describe it so now and i just want to make a point that you have zero personality when it comes down to, I need help with math. Mm-hmm. That's my personality, and that's our special thing. That's our, it's not that we have other shared interests. I mean, he, he doesn't actually say that's my special thing. I know, thing. but that's what it fucking is. That's what it is. Yeah, it breaks down to it. And so so he just kind of starts, like, icing her and avoiding her and being kind of rude to her. Not rude, like, just, like, short with her, you know? Yeah, And yeah. so then our main character chick also kind of realizes it, and then she also starts trying to be in the same way. So they're both just kind of being weird yeah, with each see, other. Yeah, see, I was done with that. I did not want yeah. any part of that. They're, I knew it was coming. They're both being weird with each other, and then uh winter break happens, and they both lie about 
what they're doing. Oh, I'm going to not do anything this break. They both make a line. They both say, like, oh, yeah, we're both, like, oh, I'm going on a trip with my family. Like, we're also going on a trip. And then they run into each other during winter <sighs> Who break. Who fucking guess? Yeah, they have a good time. And then, like, she cries and t- tells her, tells him, like, yo, I'm really fucking sad about the way things are going. And then he goes, you know, I, I want to be, like, I want to have his even, I want, I want to be special friends with you, but I also, like, want our friendship to go further or whatever, you know? Yeah. And then he, like, fucking yells and gets frustrated, and he's just like, yo, I'm sorry that I made you cry or whatever. I also want our friendship to go further. I want to talk to you a bunch. Like, I want to be, like, your best friend. So essentially, yeah. they confess their love to each other without saying I love you. Um, and then, uh, like, <laughs> they go they go their separate ways, and they go to school the next day, and everybody's standing there, and everybody, like, looks at them, and they do their weird, hey, I want to be your friend, and that's how the show ends. Oh, actually, that's not how the show ends. The show ends then. Credits roll. We have an after credits bit, like fucking Avengers Infinity War or whatever. Yeah, yeah, we're getting infinity. Um, it's our boy. He's writing in like a book or whatever, like a notebook. And, um, and then like he's like in his room and then like he, he closes the notebook and it very clearly says diary on it, whatever. <laughs> Sorry. Bless you, Thanks. sir. It says diary on it. And then he goes, huh, I wonder what so and so wrote in her diary today. And that's it. That's, that's all there is to it. Um, so the way I felt about the show is I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It was fine. You know, it was like, it was just kind of like a, you know, show about some kids that fell in love and they have this weird, was one weird friend who has this strange issue and they somehow rally around it and they do math together and it's okay. I wouldn't rewatch it. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody because at no points did it like, at no points did it ever like get me really in the feels because yeah. I've watched plenty of like yeah. these kind we, of shows. We've seen like top notch kind of this yeah. shit. I saw the one where it was like the fucking two kids in, in the middle school that I can't pronounce, you know, talk about Sukiga Kirei. Yeah. yeah, that one fucking kills me. I like, think that's the name of it. That one fucking gets me every time. At no point in this entire show that I feel like that like feel like that. I did like like certain characters and then there were parts where I thought were enjoyable, but uh it wasn't like wasn't the best. I also again want to make it real clear, I didn't like hate it you know oh no um it, here's here's my thing with it i didn't think it was substantial in any way mm-hmm. it had some cool things that were done okay mm-hmm. that's as far as it went this could have been a good show i feel like there just wasn't enough there for it to be good and i honestly think it's not a good format uh, for like a full length TV show mm-hmm. since it's based off of a four coma manga, I started understanding things a lot better. The characters were really simplistic because they didn't have much to go off. They of. should have, you know, built more into that than knowing they don't have much to work on. They should be like, we should make this, these characters more fleshed out. And they did. Yeah. yeah. Or they could have done it more like short any other. Yeah. Four coma thing where it's just like, here's going to be this bit and here's going to be this bit. And it doesn't need to be a comedy by any means. You mm-hmm. could have a romantic short bit kind of show. Mm-hmm. Uh, that being said, they just, I felt like they were going for a format that didn't fit the story or characters. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? I do understand what you're saying. Yeah, and the it show makes, could have been more. It does make more sense after the four coma part. I would like to say though, um, the way it looks, like the background, the sky, the art, I thought was really pretty. It it felt like uh everything was washed out in like a pretty way. I yeah. think like yeah, there's times where I'm just like I was watching the show, I was like, oh look at that sky. That's a like, everything's just really like, soft. What, like what nice work went into that sky or, yeah. or or these fuck or this fucking field or whatever. And I'm mm-hmm. like, hmm, it looks nice. It's visually yeah. pleasing it's and not, like digging through the field oh did yeah look good yeah yeah so like it's not like they they didn't like it wasn't like the animation was like, like it. No, no the characters looked fine they, it was a stylized way that they made them look it does remind me a lot of do ra 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 like that that uh-huh. that feel to it so I'm like huh that's interesting so it's not like it's an ugly thing to look at which is also not at all a good thing to say one thing i would like to bring up real quick okay. before we finish um and i wanted to talk about it bef- in the past but i feel like this is a good a good time to talk about it because we're talking about love in the specific type of like high school, middle school settings or whatever. Yeah. So I've noticed that in, in, um, in anime, when characters like, like each other or whatever, and they have to confess their love. Cause I guess in Japan, confessing your love is a huge it's deal, right? It's a huge fucking deal. They, it's also a pretty big deal in the United States too. I mean, just a heads up. Yeah. I mean, if you like that kind of stuff, but what I want to say is I always think it's so strange that when these people do confess their feelings for each other, they specifically use the words, I love you. Like, it's just like, oh, I want you to know I love you, right? Just because I love you sounds like a very, like, 
strong, important, monumental thing, right? You know, but for them to be right off the at, at, like off the bat, be like, "Oh, I love you," instead of being like, "I really like you," right? Or "I have feelings for you." Like in this one, I do commend them for them not actually saying the words "I love you." They said, you know, "Oh, I I want to continue to I want our friendship to grow further," which implies, "Oh, I want to be more than friends." Yeah, which I thought was super cool. Um, but I just don't that understand. Is if it might be just a cultural thing, but it's always just like, I love you. And my, and sometimes like when we'll see in shows, there's always that character, like that one girl that everybody confesses to. And like, you know, we'll always see like a clip of like, yeah, I got confessed to like three times a day or whatever. Uh-huh. You know? And, um, they're always just like, so and so from, I'm from class B. And so they don't even actually really know each other or whatever. And it's yeah. just like, I want you to know that I love you. How, how do you fucking know that? Like, how is that? It comes really- down to translation, honestly. I, uh, it, it means. I like you, but it's like stronger than like, because for us, I like you is such a weak thing that it could mean that we're friends. Yeah. I think that's what it comes down to. Uh, and in Japan, they don't really have that differentiation of like, Hey, I like you, but like, not like that. Yeah. That's why, (laughs) that's why like, like exists, dog. Yeah, exactly. That's why we double up on the (laughs) likes, but I feel like I love you is the easiest way to translate the way that they come out saying because it's like a direct translation no, that's I what it means i know that's what but, they're saying yeah but, but but it varies the same way with like their love is like our like yeah I if know. that makes sense and i think that i'll just always have an issue with that just because and i totally get that because i just don't because whenever they say i was like i don't know love is saying i love you is like yeah. it should be really important you know no it and it is but for them I love you is like, it is important. I have feelings about you mm-hmm. and they could grow Yeah. versus us being like, I like you, which can grow into love. Yeah. So that's theirs is like, I love you, which is like, you know, I have a little bit of, little, Hey man, whatever. You know, for you. I love you. And then it goes into, no, oh, I love you. I love you. Yeah. No, I just think <laughs> that, but that's why I do commend her. Like in my, in my mind, at least I really like the fact that they didn't say that they said like, I, Hey, I want to be I, homies yeah, for life, bro. I have, you know, I had, yeah. I want to, like, let's take this homie adventure to the next, to the level. next level. I have feelings for you, but it wasn't any point. I love you, which is like great. It's like, oh, awesome. Cause That's these like, middle school kids don't fucking no. actually know what love is or whatever. You no, know? it's like, Hey man, I want to nibble on your ears behind the bathroom stalls, but I can't say I like you cause that's not strong enough. So nah, I'll just say I love you. There, yeah. yeah. So anyway, not there I yet. love you. And, uh, what up? What up? I'm in class 2B. Hit me up if you're free. <laughs> Anyways, that's the that was the show. That sure was one week friends. Um, check it out if you want to. Um, it's Shout out to yeah. Sierra for recommending it for or sure. suggesting it. I guess it wasn't really a recommendation. Yeah, suggesting it as much to, of a suggestion. If you want to suggest something else, Sierra, we'll uh, we'll put it at the bottom of the queue and we'll get around to it. In we'll about six absolutely. Months. I promise you, we will watch it. We've always said we'll watch it, we and we did. fucking did. I mean, you didn't finish it, but we well, watched it. I watched. You know what? I think nine episodes is good enough for you to be like, yeah, I have an opinion on it. <laughs> <laughs> like, didn't finish it, but I'm pretty sure I have an. And it turns out that they just got even more dramatic. Yeah, no, which they, was the part that I hated about this show. They really ramped it up, and I feel like, I mean, I, I guess it's a four come among. I was assuming that if this was actually like uh, based off a of manga, if this was some real shit, if this was an actual manga with source material, like I feel like um, there probably there probably would have been way more story to it. Like yeah. after this this ending or whatever. Um, so sure, now that I know yeah. it's a four coma, I was like, cool. There's no way I'm ever gonna no. re- read this to get the the rest of the story. Um, so yeah, that was the show. Uh, yeah. Next week, what are we exactly are we talking about? Uh, we're going to be talking about Liz and the Bluebird. You're getting two different perspectives. You're getting it from somebody who likes the silent voice and somebody who hates it. No. <laughs> somebody <laughs> who's watched uh, the source material since this is going to be a, a spinoff movie um, that it, it's a spinoff of Sound Euphonium directed by the same director of a silent voice who did not direct Sound Euphonium, but works with Kyoto Animation. Yeah. Uh, and the same music dude. I don't know what to call him. Like the music dude's right. Yeah. The music dude. Composer. Yeah. The composer. Same composer for, uh, a silent voice is working on the sound euphonium spinoff movie. Liz and the Bluebird. Essentially two separate characters doing two totally separate things. You could watch it without the source material yeah. and you still follow it. So I'm going to watch it. Not seeing sound. I think I've seen a few episodes of sound euphonium. Mm-hmm. Um, you've obviously seen all of it. Yeah. Um, you've actually seen this before, this movie before. I have seen it before. And it, I haven't. We so. got to see the premiere. Kyle and I saw the premiere at Anime Expo last year, mm-hmm. 2018. Uh, and now it's finally out on Blu-ray, DVD, all that good shit. So 
pop it into your monster rancher three disc see how that goes and uh tell me what monster you got you uh, know? uh yo and fucking just talk about anime expo these boys got their press passes oh that's true my nips is rock hard we i got, got my press, press pass. passes boys so we will be at anime expo again i mean even if we didn't get the press passes yeah we, we would we still were, be there we would be there regardless but we got our press passes we're gonna be there for sure mad chilling with dj marmar i'm super stoked for 2019 ax dog yeah we're going to get down dirty in that anime. I'm not showering. What about you? I never shower. Okay, perfect. If you go to Anime Expo, please shower. Please shower. Oh, my God, please shower. <laughs> uh, okay, so anyway, this is bye from Juan. I'll see you around from Chris. Oh, I missed the action. Yeah, we you did. Oh, God, Let's go so back. Close. Let's okay, do cool. the doobly-doo. Um, anyways, if you like our if you like our, um, our logo, hit up Aaron from TurvyTops.com. If you like our theme song, check out Tom Nasser from Sound, on SoundCloud and YouTube. Trip, where people find us? You can find us on Facebook. Look up the Instagram podcast. Same thing goes for Instagram. Look up the Instagram podcast. If you want to send us a tweet, tweet at Instant Ramen Pod. You could also shoot us an email. Tell us what you think about the episode. Tell us what we should watch, what we should talk about. Tell us about who you are. Tell us about how you started listening to us. Tell us about anything you want us to. Uh, you could send us your favorite novel that you've been writing lately. You could send us some fan art of, I don't know, just throwing things out there soccer uh and other things like that <laughs> football um yeah send us your shit <laughs> just saying words now yeah no yeah we, pretty much me to set a bar we'll buy you a drink anyway yeah, that's true this is bye from juan see you around from chris hey trip don't forget just add hot water